Hi, this is Magdalena and I'm going to take you on a quick tour of your email Octopus account to help get you started. Let's begin with your dashboard. Once you have sent your first campaign, here you'll see an overview of your subscriber growth and campaign performance. But to get to that stage, you first need to connect your account to AWS. Click here to start the process. If you haven't created an AWS account yet, click No here and follow this link to set up your account. If you've got an AWS account, click Yes and follow the steps on your screen to complete the connection process. Once you've successfully connected your email Octopus account to AWS, you'll need to request production access. You can find more information about it in our knowledge base. Just type production access in the search box and follow this guide. Once you've submitted your production access request and you're waiting for Amazon's response, you can start exploring your email Octopus dashboard. You can begin by creating a list. You can do this in the list tab or by clicking here on the dashboard. You'll need to add at least one contact to be able to set up a campaign and you can do it either manually or by importing a spreadsheet of existing contacts. During the import, aside from email address and name, you can also use additional fields to store more details about your contacts, for example, their country. After creating your list, you can set up a sign-up form so that people can subscribe to your campaigns. We offer landing pages, which are standalone pages that have their own URL, embedded forms that you can add as a part of your web page, and a WordPress plugin if you'd like to connect your email Octopus account with your WordPress page, all of which you can customize according to your needs. Now, you can create multiple lists but we recommend keeping all your contacts on a single list and using custom fields to segment particular groups of contacts. To do this, head to Fields. Here you can create fields for data you wish to collect from your subscribers. You can also add the data right away while importing a spreadsheet of contacts. Later on, you can segment contacts based on that information, which gives you more control over who you send each campaign to. You can also segment contacts based on the recent engagement with your campaigns. Now, within the double opt-in tab, you can enable the double opt-in message. It's a confirmation message that will be sent to your subscribers after they fill in your form to make sure they want to be on your list. You can customize this message within this tab. Switching it on is optional. Once you have created your list, you can start designing your campaign. I would recommend creating a template that you can edit and reuse in your campaigns. You can create one by going to the Templates tab. Here you can choose to design the email with either the classic editor or the drag and drop editor. For most people we would recommend using the drag and drop editor or you can choose one of our existing templates and adjust it to your liking. If you plan on using your own HTML code to build your email template, use the classic editor instead. Once you're happy with your template's design, you can start setting up a campaign. You can choose to create a regular or automated campaign. Regular campaigns can be sent immediately or can be scheduled to be sent at a later time or date. Automated campaigns are time-based and can be used to create welcome emails and drip sequences. For example, you can automate a welcome message to be sent to your new subscribers as soon as they join your list and follow up with a second automated email a few days later. After sending your campaign, you'll be able to view its performance in the Reports tab. As you can see, we display the number of subscribers you sent the campaign to, the number of opens, clicks, how many people unsubscribed and how many bounces occurred. You can also see the 24 hours performance and the most clicked links. Under the Activity tab, you can display specific email addresses and export them if needed. Now, if you want to access your account settings, click on your account email address in the top right corner and pick Account Settings. This is where you can manage your team access. If you want to invite additional users to your account, you can do so in the Users section, just click Invite a user. Now, in the Billing section, you can see your current plan estimate future costs and upgrade your account. 
We charge you based on the number of subscribed contacts in your account. So if your list size changes, you'll be automatically upgraded if you exceeded your current tier or automatically downgraded if your list shrinks to a lower tier. Downgrading happens at the end of your billing cycle before your next monthly charge. Going back to our account dropdown, if you head through integrations and API, you'll be able to view our list of direct integrations and see a few popular Zapier integrations. Finally, if you need any help, you can click on the beacon in the bottom right corner to browse our knowledge base articles or to contact us directly. I hope you enjoyed the tour and feel free to get in touch if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.